So in that case, I'll introduce uh, Ali Larjani and David Locklear, our colleagues. Hello, everybody. My name is Ali Larjani. I'm the firmware engineer manager with uh, Azure CSI in Microsoft, uh, leading a team that uh, does all the, the server manageability. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we are going to co-present with my friend, David Locklear from Intel. Hello, uh, Dave Locklear from uh, Intel Data Center Group. Okay. So, uh, can you hear me? Is it okay? Yeah. I think uh, after two days of hot discussion uh, about the, the latest achievement and new technology, uh, that we have received in the OCP Summit 2017. So, yeah, I think that's a time to cool off a little bit, and that's uh, when the power capping comes into the play. <laughs> okay, this is our agenda for a discussion. We'll have a, a brief touch on the, the concept of the power capping uh, at data center and the power capping methods uh, we'll discuss briefly. Then the David will talk about the Intel Node Manager, how we leverage the Intel Node Manager to realize the uh, power capping at the server level. And we will continue the discussion for Project Olympus power capping. Some of the feature we added uh, in Project Olympus uh, for the power capping. And we will wrap up the discussion uh, with a couple of examples how we can leverage power capping uh, to gain more power efficiency or power utilization. So what is the power capping? Power capping is actually a technique uh, for some of, of you that uh, you might not familiar with this uh, terminology. Uh, it's used to keep the power consumption below a threshold without any interruption to the server operation. So the power capping is implemented in a hierarchical way. So So the power capping is implemented in a hierarchical way in the data center. So as you know, we, have, we don't have infinite power and cooling capacity. We have a limit. We have the power budget defined at the data center and uh, that uh, we need to continuously monitor that power consumption. And uh, the toughest device that we have is, uh, I'm shaking it. Yeah, so we have Colo Manager that's actually is a power monitoring devices. It monitors the power consumption at the highest level of the data center. And uh, then we have the row managers uh, that they are actually, they are measuring the power at the row level. And at the rack level, we also have a power monitoring devices integrated into the PDU that uh, uh, continuously monitor the power consumption per rack. And at the server level also, uh, we have sensor that we are monitoring the, the power that goes to the each server. So if there is any uh, power uh, or cooling incident that needs to lower the power, so at the topest, topest level, we have Colo Manager, it sends the alert signal to the, all the row manager, and uh, it initiates uh, this power capping mechanism. So Row manager, each row manager by itself also in propagate that alert signal to the, all the racks in the rows. And those racks also send the, the, the request to all the server in each rack to, okay, that's the time to bring the power down. And that's the way that actually the power incidents can be managed and make sure uh, uh, we can have the business continuity or operation continuity. So with the power capping, we are lowering the limit of the power consumption, and uh, the idea is that to keep the operation running. We don't want to have any interruption to the operation, but if for a short period of time there is a performance degradation, that's acceptable, as long as there is no uh, complete interrupt uh, interruption to the service. So, as this graph shows, you can see that after the 
server cost, the cost of the power is the total cost of the power, including the uh, electrical power and the cooling and the power that we re require for the cooling comes at the second greatest uh, cost at the data center. That it grabs lots of attention by the data center manager. They want to put enough investment to make sure we have enough power e efficiency at the data center levels uh, to reduce the, the total cost of ownership and operation in the data center. So, but always there is a concern in the data center, and that concern is that there is a chance for unexpected performance peak. So to deal with that, uh, one of the things is done during the uh, uh, power allocation or cooling allocation capac uh, capacity of the cooling. So uh, the data center manager, they might allocate some overhead. And uh, so uh, to make sure, okay, if there is a performance peak, there wouldn't be any uh, circuit breaker trips or uh, the, the rack is not overloaded. Those are the things, those insurance that we require to make sure there is no interruption to the service. So, but those overhead has a cost. And uh, as we said, we need to, to bring the cost down in the data center. So by leveraging the power capping, actually, we can, uh, so uh, the terminology, actually, before I get to the, the, the benefit of power capping, so that over allocation, so we, as it uh, shown here, we have the actual power and we have the, alloc uh, the uh, power allocation. And you can see there is a gap. There is a, uh, we, we, we call that a stranded power, which is on use, and it's not a good indication for uh, power efficiency if there is such a big gap. So, but by leveraging the power capping, actually we can reduce this uh, stranded power because the power capping allows us, if there is any power incidence or cooling incidence event, that we need to bring it down by minimum latency, we can reduce the power and avoid uh, any uh, interruption to the service. And also some other benefit of the power capping, uh, uh, not all the wor workload peak happen at the same time. So statistically, there, are, there have been lots of study done that shows that, so we have the workload variation. Maybe one server is, has a top, uh, the peak performance or peak uh, workload for a short period of time, and that workload might be, uh, or the performance peak might be moved to the uh, next server for the, for the next instance of in the time. So by leveraging the power capping, we can dynamically balance the cooling and power resources and we can move or steer the power where it's mostly needed. So we can monitor, okay, what, what workload is critical or what workload is highly in demand to receive those power. And then we can steer those into the, those uh, server and make sure that we get the best the performance and power utilization in this case. So as I mentioned, we have uh, two types of power capping, uh, is static versus dynamic. So in a static power capping actually, uh, I can give you an example. For example, let's say we have a rack of uh, 20 server, the total power budget for rack is five kilowatt. So we can define per, per nameplate data, which is the five kilowatt per rack, we can define in a static cap of 250 watt per server. That's very easy to achieve. We can just uh, define that policy and apply it to the server and it's done. But there is some issue here. Actually, we, we are giving the, the same share of the power if you consider, okay, we have the power budget, budget consider power budget as a power pool. Actually, we give the equal share to each server in the rack. That's easy, right? But the, the, the problem is that uh, when we do this through the aesthetic power capping, it's always uh, in effect. And as I said, if there is any performance peak or a workload needs the more power to complete this job, then the power is not available. So then the, the second approach is the dynamic power capping uh, uh, shows more efficient 
basically to to drive the power to the to the workload uh, that are in the back. In this case, still we have the same power budget uh, out of this R power pool, but we can allocate, uh, as this pie chart shows, we can allocate the, uh, the power based on the, the, the need of each workload. And the other good things with the dynamic power capping is that the policy is not, a is not active. Policy is activated whenever it's needed versus a static power capping that is always in effect. So it means that if there is no power cooling incidence or problem, then if servers need the maximum power, yeah, the power is there. It can take advantage of full power to deliver the best performance. Okay, I think that's the time to uh, switch to the Intel node manager, okay. see how we can leverage that to, to realize the power capping at the server level. Okay, thank you, Ali. So once again, I'm um, Dave Locklear with Intel. Um, this uh, drawing here is a depiction of kind of how we do the uh, power management on the uh, Intel Xeon processors. Uh, so this is implemented on the uh, Project Olympus um, uh, compute board. Um, the key here is we've got a, uh, a short control loop. Inside the, uh, in the side of Southbridge, the PCH, we have our Intel management engine. Uh, the management engine uh, runs uh, Intel Node Manager, which uh, constantly uh, polls the hot swap controller. Uh, since we've got a very fast polling rate uh, to understand the full power of the node. So all power from the power supply to the motherboard goes first to the hot swap controller so we can monitor total, total node power. Uh, secondly, the BMC is in charge of setting the policy. So that's the that's the limit for the node. So if you want to set it for 400 watts, 350 watts, or whatever you need, uh, the Intel uh, node manager will take that information, and he'll run a tight control loop uh, by communicating with the, uh, a PCU in the, in the processor. Uh, through that uh, communication path and that control loop, he can uh, limit the power in both the CPU and on the memory subsystem. Uh, this is done in a very uh, incremental method so that you're not uh, unexpectedly or, or drastically dropping power and hitting performance. So you're trying to do this with small steps, but very quickly, very smoothly, so you can bring the power down and have little impact, or no impact, hopefully, to the applications running. Um, so that's a, that's a policy that's always in place. Um, it can be adjusted by the BMC under request from the rack manager or from some other uh, outside um, outside policy agent. Um, another thing we have to handle is these requests. When Ollie mentioned that uh, you might have unexpected uh, rise in uh, application load or uh, some kind of power event, you need to very quickly throttle the CPUs or the, or the whole node in order to respond to that. Uh, so that's where you see these uh, requests coming in directly from power supplies or rack manager. Um, Intel node manager will work with the CPUs to in, uh, in just a few milliseconds, uh, drop power quickly, then ramp up to a new default power cap, uh, which would be a lower level of the previous power cap. This is all done in a very, uh, like I said, it's, it's, there's a lot of effort put in to make sure this is done in a method that's very uh, smooth and incremental and not, uh, not impacting applications. Uh, so Intel Node Manager has been around for several generations of Intel servers. Uh, we've been working with the Microsoft team for multiple uh, server generations uh, to improve it, to make it more responsive, make it more flexible. And uh, right now, we're, we're very happy with the performance we're getting. So uh, now, uh, to continue the discussion, let's take a look uh, at the, some details, how we realize the power capping uh, uh, at the server level and the rack level in the Project Olympus. So this block diagram shows, uh, as uh, uh, Dave mentioned, uh, we have uh, two mechanisms, actually. One mechanism, it's uh, called the CPU throttling, or the proc hot. Actually, that's a signal that uh, uh, is connected to the Intel chipset. And if that signal is asserted, the, it, uh, after very low latency, uh, maybe a few milliseconds, the, the frequency gets to the uh, minimum level. That's called the uh, low frequency mode. Uh, we get to the lowest uh, possible power consumption mode, 
So that's a fast reaction, actually, to a power event if it's required. And uh, the, the second mechanism is through the interaction between the BMC and the Intel node manager. So when we throttle the CPU, maybe we don't want to stay at the lowest frequency because it has a performance impact. So, but we want to make sure we are reacting to the power event quickly. So we do it the, uh, through the fast proc hot. Uh, three years, and then BMC uh, sent a new policy to the to the Intel node manager. Said, okay, now this is the power budget defined by the rack manager or row manager at different level. And as Dave said, Intel node manager gradually ramp up to to meet that power requirement. So it means that. The, low, lower the, 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 the lowest frequency is the lower power, but maybe the power budget allows us to run at the higher you know, power limit, so it means that we can improve, increase the frequency gradually and uh, have minimum impact on the workload. So in this block diagram from the Project Olympus, we can see those uh, uh, power cap triggers. Uh, we have power gap triggers comes from the PSU, and we'll see that why we need that in Project Olympus, that's for, uh, to improve the availability. And we have the power cap trigger that comes from the, the rack manager, and we'll have a closer look on that. And uh, I think we have a couple of uh, other proc hot triggers, you can see it on the left corner of this block diagram, that, uh, and also we have the VR uh, proc hot triggers so those are actually to improve the, I think, uh, reliability of the, the hardware. If there is any, any, any failure that cause uh, overcurrent uh, or under voltage on the server, or there is uh, some uh, issues with the uh, voltage regulators that po provide the power rails to the CPUs. So those detects those incidents and they assert uh, the, the proc card to the CPU and the chipset that cause that we go to the uh, safe mode actually. Make sure it doesn't cause any uh, overheating that, uh, and failure of the hardware. So at the server level, if you have visited our booth, we have had a uh, discussion about, okay, how we provide the power to the server. So each server has its own PSU, but the PSU has a, a, a modular than design. So in each PSU, we have three independent uh, power supply module that provide up to 340 watts. So we have a, a if you have looked at the R rack in the booth, we have a two three-phase AC that fits into the power supply and uh, those actually provide the, the, the redundancy on the power, AC power source. And we have those uh, uh, IVS, those are just the switch that automatically switch over if there is an AC loss in one of those fields. And the uh, output of uh, IVS, it goes to those uh, power modules that provide, do the AC to DC converter and uh, uh, generate uh, 12 volt uh, or 12.25 volt uh, DC supply to the server. So we are leveraging the power capping to actually to improve the availability of the, the server. Here in this block diagram, we can see that if there is any failure on uh, uh, two modules, so the total available power to run the server would be only 340 watts, right? So we can leverage that. There is a signal comes out of the power supply it's called the PSU alert. So as soon as this signal is exerted, it caused BMC to interact with the Intel node manager to bring the CPU first to the uh, low frequency mode, and then it would, through sending some uh, commands during that interaction between BMC and uh, Intel node manager, we cap the power to 340 watts. So you can see there is no, there is a performance degradation, but there is no, uh, the interruption to the service. So the, the, the uh, operation continuity is guaranteed here. So that's an improvement in the availability. That's a new feature we have added in the project Olympus. So 
So at the rack level, uh, we have a component uh, that calls the power distribution, universal power distribution units. So from the rack manager, there is a, to realize the rack level power capping, there is a signal called RM throttle is uh, running through the PDU. It goes to every single server in the rack. So that's been used for the fast prod hoc, uh, prod hot if it's needed. Uh, as we discussed, that's the first step in the power capping, go to the lowest frequency possible and then apply the policy. So if uh, a new policy defined at the rack level, as we discussed at the first slide, that we have this hierarchical uh, power capping policy definition to start from the data center level, goes all the way down to the row, rack, and server. So if the new policy is received at the rack level, uh, it asserts it the, the, the RM throttle. Uh, we go to the low frequency mode, and then rack managers send the, that policy to every single server in the in the rack and uh, uh, after uh, some time actually the servers uh, change the the, the uh, its frequency to to meet that uh, new power budget requirement so the other thing that we, we have, uh, the BMC actually at the server level, uh, it, imp it supports multiple policies. So we have actually, uh, we have three policy as no action, dynamic power capping only, and dynamic power capping plus the proc hot. So it gives the flexibility. If you want, you can disable. You, ma you can mask off the RM throttle. If you know that a workload, a critical workload is running on one of the server, and you don't want to power cap that server specifically, so you can send a command to the BMC and the BMC can choose the no action uh, uh, policy. It activate no action policy and it dis actually disable the RM throttle. So there will be no effect uh, on the performance. There will be no power capping on that specific server. So it creates a flexibility. Or they, it can be just a dynamic power capping only. In that case, there is no proc hot. It only sends a command uh, to define a new policy. And the other one, which is the dynamic power capping or DPC plus proc hot, uh, we, I think we already discussed that. So these are uh, a couple of examples that uh, shows how we can leverage the power capping to improve the server availability. We discussed about this uh, uh, power supply in the project Olympus that provides total uh, power of 140 watts, but if there is any hardware failure, any AC loss that cause we lose some capacity down to three, 400 watt, we can use the power capping to cap the server to three, 400 watt and continue the operation. The second example can be improving the rack density. So, uh, I have seen some data that shows that the data center are running off the power and cooling capacity. But at the same time, demand for more uh, computing resources is increasing. So in that example, we can leverage the power capping to improve the rack density. So for example, if per rack we have a 14 kilowatt uh, uh, power budget, then uh, we can run 28 nodes at 500 watts or 32 nodes at 435 watts. That's an that's example that uh, can uh, improve the power rack density. And the last one is improving the power utilization. As we discussed, we have those interface and those control to assert the power to the servers that has higher workloads. In, again, using the same uh, uh, data from previous example, if you have 14, kilo, uh, 14 kilowatt compute power, then we can run 12 load with critical load at 500 watt, so we can get the maximum performance of, of, of those nodes and 20 nodes at 400 watts. Yeah, I think that's all. Uh, there is some details uh, that shows the interaction between the uh, BMC uh, uh, rack manager, BMC, and Intel node manager to realize the power capping. Uh, but uh, we discussed that as soon as the, the proc hot or RM throttle is asserted, you can see that we go to the low frequency mode 
and we, we set the policy to the Intel node manager, and after that, uh, Intel node manager take over and ramp up to the, to the new defined policy. Okay, I think that's all for power capping. When you do the power monitoring and uh, capping, do you use the Intel node uh, manager or DCMI? What do you, it's IPMI you are using, right? We use Intel node manager. Intel node manager, okay. Also, but RBMC support DCMI. Okay. But for the power capping specifically, we use the Intel node manager. Yeah, I found those, especially power monitoring, you know, different server have different support level of the DCMI interface. Maybe new server don't have this problem. Yeah. yeah, so interface is there, but we don't leverage those for the power capping. Uh, hi, so, uh, you, congratulations, by the way, on uh, the dynamism and the, uh, the real focus on ensuring service continuity. Um, so we talked a little bit about degradation. Have, have you kind of thought about uh, potentially using stored energy at the node level to, to uh, perhaps decrease any potential or mitigate any potential degradation of performance um, uh, by using that stored energy for some period of time? As, as opposed to throttling down the frequency and then letting it kind of ride back up to the cap? Yeah, we have pr pr provision that actually the BBU battery backups uh, in every single PSU, and we can leverage that actually. So if the, based on the, the, the duration of the power or cooling uh, period, uh, we can add that functionality. We are not leveraging that at this time, but uh, we have provisioned the hardware support for that in the Project Olympus. And you know that in the data center level also we have the UPS with the battery. So if there is a transient uh, power event, so that UPS can support uh, to have no major impact on the performance. Uh, for the purpose of recording, we need to close the session, but uh, since the last session has been canceled, uh, you guys can either choose your time to spend somewhere else or stick around and we can have different conversations. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.